Hello everyone and welcome back to my class. As you know that I am Hale Manisa, teacher and junior lecturer of Ahlabad High School and Junior College. So in today's class we will continue our chapter that is the theories of consumer behavior from economics first year. In previous class already we have discussed about the utility and types of utility and the law of diminishing marginal utility. Now in this class we will discuss about the law of equimarginal utility. So in this, this is an important law of consumption and derived from the law of diminishing marginal utility. It is known by the various names such as the law of equimarginal utility and the law of substitution and the law of maximum satisfaction etc are there. So it is also called the Gossin's second law and its formulation is associated with the name of H. H. Gossin. Okay. Here the law of diminishing marginal utility explain the consumer's behavior based on consumption of only one good. But in actual life, the consumer buy a certain combination of goods with this limit income and tries to the maximize the utility. Here the law of equimarginal utility explain the terms like the definition of the law definition of the law if a person has a thing which can be put to several uses he will distribute it among these uses in such a way that it has the same marginal utility in all exactly if it has a greater marginal utility in one use than in another so he would gain by taking away some of it from the second and applying it to the first. This definition is defined through the Alfred Marshall. Okay, now after the definition of the law, we will discuss about the statement of the law. The law states that a consumer having a fixed income and facing given market prices of a good will achieve the maximum satisfaction when the marginal utility of the last rupee is spent on each good is exactly the same as the marginal utility of the last rupee is spent on any other good okay here the equalization of a marginal utilities will maximize the consumer's satisfaction exactly and the consumer attains equilibrium here so the fundamental conditions for consumers maximum satisfaction and equilibrium of the consumer can be shown and written as mux divided by px is equal to muy divided by py and then this is equal to muz divided by pz and all these are equals to mum here the mux muy muz and mum are marginal utilities of commodities and here x y and z are money okay and px py pz here px py pz are the price of x y z goods okay after this statement of the law, now we will go with the assumptions of the law. Assumptions of the law. Here, the law of equimarginal utility depends on these assumptions and that are cardinal measurement of utility is assumed. Yes, and rationality of the part of the consumer so as to get the maximum satisfaction and to attain the equilibrium is also assumed in this law okay here the marginal utility of money remains constant and the income of the consumer is given and remains constant and he spent the entire amount on different type of goods okay here the price of goods are given and constant then the utilities are here independent okay so all these are the assumptions of the law of Equi marginal utility after the assumption of the law now the elucidation of the law 
so the law of equi marginal utility with the numerical example just imagine and suppose that the consumer is prepared to spend whole of his money income that is rupees 20 on two goods goods are x and y so the market price of the two goods are rupees 3 and rupees 4 respectively now the marginal utilities of goods x and good y are shown here just to see this table and the units and the mux and muy here mu are the marginal utilities of x and marginal utilities of y good okay so so here in this explanation of the consumer's maximum satisfaction and the consequent equilibrium position we have to divide the marginal utilities of x by price 3 that is x into mux by its price that is rupees 3 and the marginal utility of y that is muy by rupees 4 so here reconstruction the table by dividing the marginal utilities of good x by rupees 3 and the marginal utilities of good y by rupees 4 so here we get the utility of expenditure as shown here in this table so see this table and observe that the marginal utility of expenditure if the consumer purchase the combination of four units of x and two units of y he fulfill all the equilibrium conditions here mentioned just now in the table here the first is the ratio of the marginal utility to price of good x must be equal to the price of marginal utility of price good y then the second is the income and expenditure must be equal and third is that maximum satisfaction exactly so here in this first condition is that mux divided by mx that is equals to muy and divided by my is equal to 8 whereas here the marginal utility and the x is good and the price here the x is good and here the marginal utility of y here the y is the good and here py means the price of good that is equals to 8 this is first condition now the second condition is that here the qx into multiplied by the px and then it is adding by qy and that is multiplied by the py here q is the quantity of x and qy here is the quantity of y then here the px is the price of a good x okay and then py means here the price of a y good okay here y is equals to e and here where y is income and e is expenditure okay so then first already we have discussed about the prices of x good and y good that is 4 or 3 here by this 4 into 3 plus 2 into 4 is equals to 20 after that all buying by adding all the marginal utilities of both the goods we will get the total utility that is 144 plus 68 is equals to 182 so consumer will be in equilibrium when he is buying the four units of x and two units of y good and spending rupees 20 on them and gets the total utility that is equals to 182 okay which is the maximum if he spends his income in any other way all the three conditions cannot be fulfilled simultaneously exactly after the elucidation of the law now we will discuss the limitations of the law of equimarginal utility so here the equimarginal principle is subject to the certain limitations which may be are the law is based upon the assumptions of the rationality of the part of the consumer exactly but in the real life here 
the several obstacles may obstruct the rational behavior so that this law works out fully only if the goods are divisible if goods happen to be large and indivisible it is not possible to accurate the marginal utility of money spent on them exactly here and the law of the maximum satisfaction will not be applicable to complementary goods exactly then here the cardinal measurement of utility and the marginal utility of money remaining the constant etc are not realistic assumptions so they are not valid it is assumed that the consumer has a perfect knowledge but this is not correct so all these are the limitations of the equi marginal utility now we will see the importance of the law is of a great practical importance in economics exactly in this the basis of the consumer expenditure and the basis for savings and consumption and in the field of production and its application to exchange and the price determination and at last the public finance will come under the importance of this law here the basis of the consumer expenditure is the expenditure pattern of every consumer is based on this law only so in basis of a savings and consumption a prudent consumer will try to distribute his limited means between present and future consumption exactly so as to have a equal marginal utility in each this is how the law guides us exactly here the meaning of prudent means avoiding unnecessary risk okay when come to in the field of production to the businessman and to the manufacturer the law is of special importance and he works towards the most economical combination of the factors of production for this he will substitute one factor for another till their marginal productivities are the same get it now in its application to change this law works in all our exchanges exchange is nothing but the distribution of one thing for another okay so in price determination this principle has an important bearing on the determination of value and price exactly in public finance public expenditure of a government conform to this law taxes are also lived in such a manner that the marginal sacrifice to each taxpayer is equal so that the law of distribution applies to all branches of the economy theory get it after the law of the equi marginal utility now we will discuss about the shortcomings of the cardinal utility analysis the main defects points out in this utility analysis are that the cardinal measurement is not possible exactly here the assumptions of rational consumer is not correct okay then the wrong assumptions of independent utilities that the utility of a good depends on other goods also exactly here the assumptions of the constant marginal utility of money is wrong and one commodity model is unrealistic after that the income effect and the price effect and the substitution effect are not clearly brought out so this analysis fails to explain demands of indivisible goods so by this we will stop here our class we will continue in next class that is the indifference curve analysis okay thank you